Why do I like this so much? Why does this make me feel so good? What might this mean about me? What can I develop this skill into? Where can I find more ways to take this strength and this this thing that I do that I love that I'm good at and bring it out professionally? Welcome to The Art of Speaking Up, a podcast that empowers professional women to rise. I'm your host, Jessica Guzik, and in this show, I take you undercover into the stories and lessons that I learned, sometimes the hard way, throughout my career. I also talk with working women, leaders, and coaches to show you that no matter what your struggle is and no matter what your career goals are, you already have all the talent that you need to succeed. I am feeling very, very, very excited to record this episode. Today's episode is a solo episode. It is just me again. Hopefully you're not getting sick of me, I hope. But the reason that I'm so excited is because the topic of today's episode is one of the things that I care about most and that I actually think is one of the most important things, if not the single most important thing for your career development and your ability to grow your career and move forward in a way that feels really, really good for you. My mission for this show is to help elevate women, to give women the tools and the inspiration and anything else I can give them to help them move up in their careers. And one of the most effective ways that I have seen in my career and in other people that I've worked with throughout my career is to get very deeply in touch with your strengths and to use your strengths and allow them to be part of your career and part of your day-to-day job. I talked about this in episode one. This is core to the mission of the show. This is where the rubber hits the road. If you only ever listen to one episode of this show, but please don't, but if you do, let it be this one. And now, before we go any farther, here's a question. Why is this topic so important? And why, if I only listen to one episode, should it be this episode? And the reason why is because your strengths are the one thing, they are the Swiss army knife that you use for everything. You use your strengths to get ahead. You use your strengths to amplify your impact. You use your strengths to get through the things that you're not good at. You use them to move through things where your weaknesses and your challenges are showing up. Your strengths are the single most important thing that can propel you forward in your career. You will use your strengths to build confidence if you're struggling with confidence. They're literally the Swiss army knife. When you know what you're good at, you can take the things that you're good at and use them in almost every situation. So think of it this way. If you could have just one tool, you would probably choose the Swiss army knife because it works on everything. And that's how I want you to think about your strengths. They work on everything. And so it is critical and fun and exciting to explore them. And now, if you're having a thought, if you're having a thought that sounds something like, but I'm not good at anything, I don't have any strengths, or I don't know what my strengths are, or this one is one of my favorites, oh, I have strengths, I'm good at things, but they don't apply to my work, I'm good at things outside of work. If you're having any of those thoughts related to your professional strengths and your professional superpowers, this episode is for you. Those thoughts are wrong, they are false, they are untrue, and I am determined to prove that to you. So right now, I just invite you to sit back, relax, enjoy the episode, open your mind, and let's start learning what you're really, really good at. I want to start by asking you to imagine a box. And now when I say box and when I ask you to imagine a box, I'm thinking more of kind of like a pastry box, like a small cardboard box. It can be any color and it has a lid and the lid just kind of hinges open and closed, kind of like a pastry box. And I want you to imagine that this box is in a really, really, really dark room and that this box is filled with the brightest, shiniest, most beautiful, warm light. So it's like when you open up the box, it's kind of like some of those scenes in the movies where it's like, oh, like the lid is lifted and the light is just beaming out of the box in every possible direction. And even when the lid of the box is closed, 
there are still little slits on the side right across the top where you can see the light peeping out. You can tell that there's light in the box because you can see it peeping out the cracks. And then when you open the box, the light just shines and spills over everything. That is how I like to think about strengths. And that is how I want you to think about your strengths. And the reason why this analogy works so well is because even if you're not totally in touch with your strengths, and even if you're hearing this and thinking, I don't really know what my strengths are, I'm not sure what they are, the good news is, is like that box of light, it still peeps out over the sides. So when you have a true strength, it will show, it will peep out of the edges and the cracks, even if you're totally unaware of what it even is. But discovering your strengths and figuring out what your strengths are is equivalent to opening the lid of that box and letting that light shine over everything. So it's like a 10x or even more 100x amplification of what it was before you even bothered to open the box. And the incredible thing about it And the reason that the title of this episode says, let your strengths spill out, is because once the box is open and once that light is shining out, it hits everything around it, right? It doesn't discriminate. It's not like the light is a laser beam that hits like one little tiny spot, but it's just this massive surge of light that will literally touch anything it can get its hands on. And that's how your strengths are. As soon as you unleash them and bring them out into the world, they spill over onto everything. And that is why being in touch with your strengths and really amplifying them consciously can have such a transformational effect on your career. And that is what I want for you the most. And so you can think of this episode essentially as a little bit of an instruction manual on how to open the box. So how do you make sure that your strengths are shining and touching everything around you as opposed to just peeping out in little instances here and there? So the question of the day and what we're going to be focused on is how do I open the box? And now here's the thing about strengths. Here's the beautiful thing about strengths. You actually probably have a bunch of them. That being said, if you're not sure what they are, I think it's best to start by just trying to identify one. So your goal for right now should be to figure out just one of your strengths, and then you can go on and start to uncover others. And now if you're committed to this and you're you're thinking, okay, I, you know, I want to do this. I want to figure out what I'm good at. I want to turbocharge my career. I want to get some momentum here. I want to start moving forward faster. I want to feel better at work. And you're on this journey of uncovering your strengths. The first thing <laughs> that you need to do without exception, is you need to massively, massively open your mind and be open to seeing things differently. And the reason that you need to have a ton of openness around this is because our natural state is that it is very, very easy for us to see the things that we are bad at. It is very easy for us to remember the mistakes that we've made and notice the negative. And our brains are wired that way. We are wired that way because Back when we were cavemen, we wanted to see all the negative things so that we didn't get eaten by a bear because the negative things were bears that ate us. So those of us who were not good at seeing the negative things, aka the bears, got eaten and died and they didn't survive. And all of us who survived and get to live in this wonderful modern contemporary age, we are the ones that are really good at seeing the negative things and we didn't get eaten by the bears. But now there are no more bears. The bears are gone. Well, I mean, there are, but you know what I mean. There are no more bears. But the problem is <laughs> a lot of us tend to have thinking that skews very negative, And that is normal. But what that means is that when you're going into a space like strengths identification and thinking about what you're good at and what you bring to the table, you are fighting against your body's biology. And your body's biology is powerful. I never say AF. I don't know why, but like, I feel like this is a good instance. Your body's biology is powerful AF. Things like eating and sleeping, these are things that we can't avoid doing. So when your body is wanting you to behave in a certain way because it thinks that that is going to ensure your survival, it's going to be really, really hard to change that pattern. So if you're feeling resistance and you're trying to figure out what you're good at and you're feeling yourself kind of self-sabotage or focus on the negative... 
No, that that is not happening because you suck at everything and because you're the one person, you're the one exception out there who has no strengths. That's garbage. That is not true at all. That is literally just faulty wiring that we all have. And it is up to you. It is up to you to overcome that and to push through that and to be committed to being objective and giving yourself the gift of open mindedness so that you can begin to allow yourself to see what some of those superpowers and some of those strengths might be. So the first thing is you've got to open your mind and you've got to recognize that if you feel yourself going down like a Debbie Downer rabbit hole and being like, I suck at everything, I'm not good at any of this stuff, that is wrong. So that's the first thing. But I get it. I get that it can be really hard to just make this huge leap and say, oh, yeah, I'm good at that. When, you know, we we don't do that that often. A lot of us haven't really done an exercise like this before where we step back and say, what am I good at? And I found a really nice, sneaky, hacky little entry point to help you get close to what you're good at. And one way to do it, and it's a really fun way to, one way to start figuring out what you're really good at and what some of those superpowers are and what, you know, what is that light inside of the box? One way to do it is to really think very deeply about what brings you enormous amounts of joy. And you might be thinking this sounds weird. Like what, like why are we looking at joy? I thought we were talking about strengths. What's going on here? But joy will usually lead you to another thread that will lead you to your strengths. And when I'm talking about joy, I'm talking about a very specific type of joy. It is a deep sense of inner satisfaction, inner contentment. The way that I think about this feeling of joy that I'm describing, for me, (laughs) I feel it very intensely when I'm doing a puzzle, which I haven't done for a while, so this is kind of a random example. But when I'm doing a puzzle and I'm putting the last piece in the puzzle, think, just stop for a second. Oh my God, I'm getting so excited about this because I love it so much. Think of that (laughs) amazing feeling of when you put the last piece in the puzzle. It feels so good, right? So there's a sense of joy there, but it's a very particular kind of joy. It's a very satisfying, fulfilling, feel-good type of joy. And now I want you to take that feeling of joy and start paying attention to everything you do and see if that happy, content, positive, energized, satisfied feeling of joy comes up in your day-to-day life. And here's a really common example. People who have superpowers and strengths around organization and being organized, they feel this joy when they write to-do lists and when they organize things. They feel the sense of joy. I am unfortunately not one of those people. I wish I derived joy so badly. I wish I derived joy from being organized. But If you are one of those types of people, this is a great example. So this is what I mean by searching for joy. You want to find activities and things that you do that bring you that feeling. And they can be the tiniest things, right? It doesn't have to be like, oh, this big project that I worked on brought me those feelings of joy. It could be the tiniest, teeniest thing that you do. It could be like noticing an interesting pattern when you're at a work meeting and making an observation and being like, oh, I just I just noticed something and maybe this can help. You're, you're looking at every little micro moment and all of the different things that you do throughout the day, spying and hunting for that spark and that feeling. And this is why when people say, oh, you know, I'm not good at anything or my strengths don't really apply at work. That's why I say there, there's, that's so unlikely to be true. That is so, so unlikely to be true. Because if you think about no matter what your job is, the number of things that you do throughout the day, if you take them down to their most granular, teeniest, tiniest steps that you do from the start of the day through the end of the day, there has got to be something in there, even if it's the littlest thing that sparks the teeniest amount of joy for you. And you can start there. And now you might be thinking, okay, something makes me happy. I like doing it, but I'm trying to find my strengths. I want to know what I'm good at. And this is where we make the connection between the things that give you that happy, positive, satisfied feeling of good momentum and the things that you're good at. Here's how you bridge from activities that bring you joy to your strengths. Because the thing is, 
Your strengths are not the activities. So let's take the example of to-do lists. Your strength is in structure and organization and accomplishment, moving things from a theoretical disorganized mess to an organized list and then driving that forward and getting things done. That skill, do you know how valuable that skill is in the business world? That You can take that same skill. If you like making to-do lists, you can take that same skill and you can be a COO. You can be a chief operating officer of a company because all that's doing is taking that skill and blowing it up huge and adding a couple of other things in there. And the reason that I'm giving you this example and saying, if you like making a to-do list, you have a superpower around structure and execution and you could be a COO one day. The reason that I'm saying this is because this is how strengths work. They're born from a little kernel, a little spark, a little thing that you love and makes you happy. And I think what happens is we live in this world and we work in this professional world that a lot of times forgets to tell us to stop and nurture those strengths and forgets to have a stop and say, wait, why do I like this so much? Why does this make me feel so good? What might this mean about me? What can I develop this skill into? Where can I find more ways to take this strength and this this thing that I do that I love that I'm good at and bring it out professionally. So it sounds so little, right? Like I'm telling you to look for these micro moments that bring you these sparks of joy and satisfaction. But the thing is, a strength is a strength is a strength. Whether you're making a to-do list or running a company, the underlying thing is structure and execution, right? And so what you want to do is take these moments of joy and figure out what is the true thing beneath them that you are using and that is driving them forward. And that is what the strength is. And so if you want to get super tactical about this, start making a list. Start making a list of all of the things that give you that feeling of joy. And once you're satisfied with the number of things on your list, step back and say, what is the common theme that is underlying some of these things? And the more things that you add to the list and the more you begin observing, what you'll start to see is there are themes emerging. So I would challenge you, I would challenge you to come up with a list of 20 to 30, like let's get aggressive, 30 items on the list, 30 things, they could be inside work or they could be outside work, it doesn't really matter, but 30 things that give you a feeling of joy and excitement and spark. And then I want you to step back and I want you to look at that list and start organizing the things on it into themes and group them together. And once you have a group, ask yourself, Underneath all these activities, what is the one core thing that I am bringing to the table that is helping me be really skilled at this particular thing? Some ideas for what that core strength or skill could be is it could be implementation, which is figuring out how to get things done. It could be structure, like I said, which is creating organization out of something that's a mess. It could be problem solving. It could be finding the answer to a puzzle or a conundrum that feels totally unsolvable. It could be connecting to people, right? So if you're really good at being a team player and you're really good at partnering with other teams, there's probably a strength or a superpower there around your ability to build genuine connections with people around you, which is huge in your career. And this is also why when people tell me that they're good at things, but the things that they're good at don't apply to work, I call BS on that. Because the things that you're good at, you know, the activities that you say that you're good at that don't apply to work, there's an underlying strength behind them, right? So maybe you're good at a sport and you're like, okay, this sport, you know, let's say it's tennis. This has nothing to do with my job. I'm not a professional tennis player. I'm going to challenge you there and say, well, hold on a second. First of all, in order to get good at tennis, you probably had to put in a lot of time and hours and dedication to learning the sport, commitment to getting better at something and being focused on it and getting better and better and better. That in and of itself is a strength. And then it requires grit and resilience and determination. Your body gets tired and you have to push through that. And you have to keep focused on the end game and keep moving ahead. And that ability to stay with something 
and not fall off the wagon because you're getting tired or it's getting hard. Again, that is a huge strength and a huge skill that you can bring in professionally. So I don't really believe that there are that many things out there in the world that you can just be good at and there is zero application and there is zero use case in your job. And you might be noticing a central theme here, which is it requires an enormous amount of creativity and openness to make these connections. We are not used to looking at our lives and ourselves in this way. And sometimes at work, things can get really rigid and regimented. And we think of our job duties as these very specific things. And we think, well, how could all of these other activities I enjoy possibly apply? But let me tell you one thing. The more you advance in your career and the more you move up, the less it's about specializing and doing these very, very, very particular activities. And the more it's about having these much broader skills, skills like EQ and implementation and structure, those are the skills that you want to be nurturing because those are the ones that are actually going to help you advance. Not that specialization doesn't have value and not that those activities aren't important. They're a huge foundation professionally. But as you execute those skills day to day, it's super important to step back and see the bigger picture and start to identify some of the big themes and broader things that you're good at that can underlie everything. And like I said at the beginning, you want to just start by trying to figure out one thing that is a strength of yours. And once you figure that out, I want you to open the box and let the light spill and touch everywhere. When you learn and when you figure out that there's something that you are good at, that is the time where you flip the switch and start figuring out how you can bring that out everywhere. And this should be a fun and positive and enriching exercise because so often the things that we're good at, they feel good while we're doing them. So let's just stay with this example of to-do lists, right, and structure and implementation. I would say People who are really good at that stuff, it's a combination of implementation and structure. Structure is knowing how to put things together, and implementation is knowing how to accomplish things and get things done. It's kind of a hybrid of two strengths and one. It's kind of a two and one. But let's say you identify that that's what you're good at. Then you want to start thinking, okay, where else can I use structure and my ability to really enjoy organizing in every aspect of my career? And how can I use it in places that I might not expect? And this is where you want to let it spill over into everything you do in a joyful and natural way. And the reason why I encourage you to go from these very specific activities that bring you joy to then these broader themes of strength and zooming out and getting to these much bigger buckets of themes is that when you identify the broad theme, it is much easier to apply that in all kinds of different situations, right? So being good at to-do lists and loving creating to-do lists, that is a very specific thing. That is a singular thing. But structure and getting things done is huge. And there are so many places you can apply this. And just like you went through and looked at every activity that you do and found those little tiny moments where you feel that sense of joy and that sense of satisfaction, just like I had you do that to figure out what some of those activities are that you love, that get you to those themes that are your strengths, you want to go through those again, now knowing what your strengths are and figuring out if there are untapped opportunities, if there are places in your job day to day where you can take the things that you're good at and the things that you love doing and the things that just come so naturally to you, if there are places where you can take those things and bring them out even more? And the answer is almost always yes. It might require some creativity. It might even require you to maybe go out and find a new type of project or get exposed to new types of work where you can use some of those strengths. It might require you to be very open-minded and searching for places and use cases where you can apply what you're good at. But once you get in the habit of doing it, it's going to come more and more naturally. And what's going to happen is 
you're going to start performing at a higher and higher level. And you're going to be enjoying it more because it's going to come from a genuine place inside you. Because the things you identify as the things you are good at are authentic to you. They're part of who you are. So bringing them out in that way is going to feel good and natural. And I guarantee you, as you start to do this, people around you will start to take notice. And this will have a ripple effect throughout your career. And you will start doing this on autopilot. And hopefully, your professional life and your professional experience will get better and more fun. And you'll be more open to challenges too, because these strengths of yours are going to become a toolkit that you're going to learn how to apply in many, many different situations. Now, if you hit a wall with this and you really can't come up with anything, another way to start figuring out what your strengths are and what you're good at is to ask people. And that can be terrifying. Oh my goodness. I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little like terrified even just imagining it and talking about it. It is really scary. But you would be so surprised at the things that you hear back. I once did a workshop where part of the homework of the workshop was I had to reach out to people and ask them what I was good at. And I wanted to die. I wanted to die a thousand deaths. Again, just talking about it. I want to die a thousand deaths again. It's scary. But I still remember some of the emails that I got back in specific detail because they were so helpful. And getting positive feedback can be so, so huge for us and for our self-esteem. Because like I was saying before, we're wired to be really, really hard on ourselves. And I think that as women, we can often take that to an even deeper and more extreme level where our default state, sometimes what feels comfortable and familiar to us is keeping ourselves very small, not being too good at things, not being too noticeable, just kind of being neutral. And that can make it feel so, so uncomfortable for us to say, I am good at this thing. Declaring unequivocally to yourself or to people around you, it doesn't really matter. The act of declaring that you are good at something, that by definition is an act of taking up space. And that is something that can be very, very challenging for women to do. So getting that outside feedback can be a really, really good way to get the ball rolling. But if you're not feeling ready to do that, That is totally okay, but what you can do and what should not be scary at all is to start making that list of what sparks that feeling of joy and satisfaction. What are those things that you do in your career that feel like putting the last puzzle piece into the puzzle? What are those activities for you? And then find the themes and then find ways to bring those out everywhere you possibly can. And the more you do it, the more your strengths will spill out into everything that you do. So I would love to hear from you if you spend some time thinking about this. Have you uncovered anything that you're good at? Let me know. Let me know. You can always find me on Instagram. Handle is the name of the show, The Art of Speaking Up. And now I'm going to do something a little bit new and a little bit special. And I'm going to transition into the closing segments for the solo episodes. So I realized that my interview episodes have these lovely segments where there's the interview and then there's the listener question and then there's the closing questions. And I thought it would be nice to bring some closing segments to the solo episodes. So I'm going to try this out for the first time. Let me know what you think, but I'm going to model these after the closing questions that I ask all of the guests. So I'm going to share a tactical piece of advice or a tip or some inspiration on speaking up. And then I'm going to share some empowering, optimistic, feel good advice to close out the solo episode. So today's very, very tactical tip on speaking up. I'm going to go back to the basics and I'm going to start with something that is a core foundation of this show that I would want you to carry with you for your entire career and your entire life, which is that any idea that you have is good enough to share. An idea does not need to pass a smartness test. It does not need to pass a fanciness test. It does not need to pass a test of any kind to be worthy of sharing. 
There is a reason that an idea comes to you, and you're never going to know the potential that an idea has unless you share it. So if you're finding yourself censoring your ideas, or if you're getting ideas in meetings and at work, and you're not sharing them because you're afraid they're not good enough, or you're afraid that you won't look good enough when you say them, I want you to lower the bar. The bar for sharing an idea is that you have an idea. And the more you release the fear that the idea is not good enough, the more you will become present in the moment and you will get out of your head and you will stop spinning over whether something's okay to share and you'll be present in the conversation. You'll be so present in the conversation that you won't be able to self-censor and think about it as much because you'll be engaging in something and contributing. So that is my push and my tip and my piece of advice for speaking up. And I wanted to close in a way by... I guess asking myself the closing question, which is like a little bit strange, but the purpose of the closing question and the reason why I do that is because I believe that inspiration is at the core of everything. I think it doesn't matter how many skills a person has or often even how confident a person is. I think when you feel inspired and you feel a spark inside, That is the thing that carries you through to your goal, and that is the thing that can move you forward so powerfully. So that's why I like to end with inspiration. And the inspiration that I want to end with today is all about what we can do for one another as women. And I've talked about this in other episodes, but it's a value that is so close to my heart and so important to me that it has to take my first space for this new segment that I'm trying out. But the power in women supporting women is exponential. I've created this show to help support women. And in turn, as I've evolved, I've had other women supporting me in this effort, whether it's been guests who have come on the show or friends who have supported me on the side or you, the listeners, you've reached out to me and said the kindest things to me and just given me incredible fuel to go on. When women come together in this way and support one another, we begin to become unstoppable and we generate a kind of momentum that I think is unmatched anywhere else. But it starts with us. It starts with working on our relationships with ourselves and learning to trust ourselves and learning to be okay with imperfection. And in moments when things are really hard or we're feeling like we messed up or we're feeling angry at ourselves, instead of getting more mad at ourselves and being even meaner to ourselves because a difficult thing is happening, giving ourselves some space to be human and some space to mess up. And the more that we're able to do that for ourselves, I think the more that we're able to do that authentically too for the women around us. So I think in this whole vision that I have for the future of women rising up, we are essentially healing ourselves and learning to love ourselves so that in turn we have something very, very powerful, a very strong anchor inside that we can deliver to other women. So that is my inspiration for today. If there's something that you can do in some way to support yourself or be kinder to yourself or be kinder to someone around you, I would encourage you to do it. And with that, I'm going to close out this solo episode. If you've made it to this point and you're still listening, thank you so much for making it here. And I guess I'll use this opportunity to ask you a question. I would love to get your feedback on the show and know if there's anything that you think I could do to improve the show or make it even better for you. This is really my first time creating content like this. So there are all these questions like, what types of guests do I want to interview? And how long should the episodes be? And how often should I do a solo episode and all kinds of things and I'll continue to experiment and follow my gut and follow my joy and follow what feels fun and what is hopefully helpful for you but I would love to know what you think because this show is for you so please feel free to reach out to me again I'm on Instagram my handle is the art of speaking up I love hearing from you it fills me with so much joy and I wanted to thank you for tuning into this solo episode I can't wait to catch you next week. And in the meantime, have an incredible week. Bye.